this is my first video in my module on making graphs to represent data. And in this video, we're going to confront just the basics of how to create a histogram and some things about them. So, so when we get started, we see the histogram is a graph that displays the data by using contiguous vertical bars unless the frequency of the class is zero of various heights to represent the frequencies of the classes. So what I want to mention right off the bat is this. We say uh, contiguous bars, that is bars uh, that are back to back, okay, that abut one another. Or, or there are no gaps between them, okay? Um, we know a few things about histograms. They're used for interval and ratio data, data types. So we're talking about things that are numerical, okay? Also, uh, they require boundary information. So remember, we have class limits and class boundaries for each class. What we're going to require here are the boundaries, and that's so that our classes <coughs> uh, are continuous with one another when we draw the graph, okay? But as far as making one of these goes, uh, we start with just by making the x and y axes to represent our... our uh, our classes and the frequencies in each class. Okay, you know, so I say frequency here. So uh, the things uh, I want to label these with here. We said the x-axis is always the horizontal axis. We're going to talk about uh, this is our class classes. Okay, in this case we should label this. Uh, and it doesn't seem that I have. Oh, oh yes, we have a table here. We say the following is a frequency distribution for the record high temperatures of all 50 states. So not only are we going to put the classes down here, this is just for like nodes purposes, but we should label this. Always label. And you know, I even grade on this. But we'd say this is uh, uh, temperatures, temperatures. And then up here we have like frequency. So we say frequency. You could even write a, a lowercase f here on this axis here. Uh, as far as what we need to put on these axes, let's start with your x-axis, which is your, your boundaries here. Interesting thing is this. We're going, uh, let's see, 99.5 up to 104.5. This is a width of 5, and so is this, a width of 5, a width of 5, a width of 5, a width of 5. Uh, but you'll notice that 99.5 up to, but not including 104.5, this 104.5 is looks like it's in two separate classes. What we're going to do is we're going to put numbers on the x-axis for each of these boundaries. So like 99.5 is going to get its own number here, 99.5. So, you know, we say 99.5. And then the next one's going to be 104.5. And I'm going to try to stagger these a little bit. It's not as easy for me to write with this uh, device here. But we say 109.5. And basically, we are just putting a number on the x-axis for each of these boundaries. So 109.5, 114.5 is going to be our next one, 114.5, uh, oh yeah, 119.5, 119.5. Uh, 119.5 and then 124.5, 124.5, the next one will be 129.5, 129.5, and then last but not least, we have 134 and a half. Okay, and so our goal here is basically just to uh, reflect the frequency of each class uh, on top of their classes here. So we noticed that the highest datum that we had here, our maximum frequency was 18. Okay, is 18. So basically, we only need to go up to 18. I'd say we, we should probably go up to, say, 20. We'll go by like fives or something like that. So 10, you know, 15, 20. Okay, so when we make this, a um, couple of important things to note. First one is going to be this. Essentially, uh, we went from zero up to 99 and a half on our x-axis. So it is actually a gradable offense here if you don't put this in, but we usually put in like a, a squiggly mark here. And this just notes a jump. Okay, it's a jump from zero to other value. Okay, so if we were to go up by like two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 10, 12, we didn't have to jump from zero to two, but if we're going up by five each time, but this is a jump here of 99 and a half. We put a squiggle in there to denote that we're jumping up to this value. And then the other thing is this. We're basically just going to put a bar on top of each of these classes. So our first class being 99 and a half up to 104 and a half, we had a frequency of 2. Then we're going to say, okay, well, 2 would be about a height like this. I'd grab a straight edge, and we said we could go down like this. Then I'm going to leave this blank here just till we get done with our, our skeleton. Then let's talk about a few possibilities, what you can do with your bars. 104 and a half up to 109 and a half is at a height of 8. So between 104 and a half, 109 and a half, we say 8. 8 would be about right here. You notice that I'm just kind of trying to get my height from over here. But we'll just go ahead and drop the bars here. We should be using a straight edge for these also to be, you know, clean about it. 18 is our next bar here. We say 18 is about a height, uh, about right here. So we're going to drop in our bar 18 here. And the next one is 13. 13 is at about a height of right here. So here's our bar for 13. Also 7. 7 is about yay tall. Uh, we have two last classes here and these are at heights of 1. So with respect to our first bar, they're half of that first bar. Now, uh, I have sometimes people that uh, that will put in numbers on these. So like they'll even write in 18 and of course this one here was 13. This one to the left here is 8. This is uh, 2. And if it's, uh, you know, let's see, a 7 here. And if they're too small, you can draw in arrows here. We can say, okay, 1. 
All right. Also, you know, it's kind of interesting. You look at this distribution here, we see this kind of bell-shaped thing. It just means that most temperatures are somewhere, high temperatures are somewhere around in this neighborhood right here. And as you get cooler and cooler from this temperature, or higher and hotter from like the middle temperatures here, you don't get as many states that get that hot or that, that cold. It's not normal, okay? But basically, this is how you make a histogram. So.